Hi, welcome to the b and series. I'm Elvin, the founder of uh, Dr. Wealth. And today we have the authors of this newly launched book, The Trader's Blueprint. All right. And for a start, let's get to know one of, uh, every one of them. Can you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hi, my name is Colin. Uh, previously, I was a stockbroker for 12 years. Right now, more like an agent investor, investing in different businesses. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi. My name is Mark. Uh, I was an ex-professional gamer turned proprietary trader and now I'm actually uh, trading my own book together with uh, I'm doing also uh, as a business partner to Colin. Hi, my name is Rainer. I'm an uh, independent trader and previously I was an uh, ex-prop trader. So then I left the trading industry to trade for myself and right now I am also the uh, founder of Trading with Rainer which is an educational trading website that seeks to uh, help and empower retail traders. Hey guys, my name is Alex. I'm the co-founder of Dr. Wealth. So I'm also from Dr. Wealth. It seems I own self-interview own self, okay? So I'm also a self-directed options trader, meaning that I'm an independent trader and I trade my own personal account. And uh, I'm also a certified financial technician, which means that I'm a qualified technical analyst. Colin, I understand that you are the mastermind behind this book and you've got all your friends to write, co-write this book. So how did this idea came about in the first place? After I finished writing the first book, right, The Systematic Trader, because I was doing my own uh, training, uh, The Systematic Trader course, so I thought, uh, what about getting all my friends together and putting their best strategy, uh, their most favorite strategy into a single book and share this book with people. Uh, I think a book is a very good idea to actually uh, put everything permanent and uh, put it so that you last for the rest of your life. So that's why I contacted Arena and Alex uh, to actually come together and write this book. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask Mark and Arena, what are some of the common misconceptions about trading that you have encountered? So uh, I think the common misconception is, uh, you know, you can trade and uh, learn to trade and then in six months time you can uh, own a Ferrari, you know, you can have a mansion at the beach, you know, and, and this kind of a uh, uh, high lifestyle kind of thing. But uh, actually, trading is actually a very tough game, okay, uh, it's, it's the same as any profession, it requires a lot of time. Of course, if you are a little bit uh, smarter, <laughs> you can get it faster, but you, you need to be deep in the trenches doing trading and stuff like that to really understand how this whole game works. And then from there, you'll be able to, uh, once you get how the game works, then it gets, uh, it will get easier, it will, it will not be perfect, you know, because the markets are very, very random and very volatile. But uh, if you stick to a strategy that you're comfortable with, chances are you will be up uh, ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your background is a gamer, right? Yeah. So do you think there are some skills in gaming that can also apply to trading that help you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, as gamers, we treat everything as a game. Uh, last time my coach, a uh, gaming coach, always tell me, you know, Mark, in life, everything is a game. So everything can be gamified in such a way. So uh, when you look at the markets, it's the same thing. Uh, when we play a game, you know, you want to know what works and what doesn't. You know? And if the game somehow changes, then you've got to change with it. So when you're fighting, a, let's say, a particular opponent, one opponent may play a, single, a certain play style, and then another may play differently. And if you, when you see that happen and you're not prepared for it, you need to be able to adapt on the fly. So I think that is very similar to trading, and that's why uh, Prop tra trading firms usually look for gamers, yeah, because they tend to be more flexible, more versatile, you know, and they, they are not hinged on this particular model I have to work with. So I just do whatever works. I think that's important when you trade the markets. You need to know, you need to try it out first, and then know what works and what doesn't, and then shift along with it. I think that, that's the most important thing when you start trading yeah, and investments. How about Rainer? About misconceptions that you have encountered. Okay, so for me personally, I find. One of the biggest misconceptions in uh, trading or investing is, you know, that you have to predict what the market is going to do be before you can make money, which is, uh, which is not true. Because if you use uh, just a very simple casino analogy, right, if, you know, gambling uh, uh, a round of roulette, the casino wouldn't know over the next 5 rounds, 10 rounds or 20 rounds whether it's going to make money, right? It doesn't try to predict whether it's going to make money on the next few rounds of gamble. But in the long run, the casino knows it's going to make money because of the, uh, the age that they have in their in their system and it's the same for trading that you know you will not you are not uh, trying to predict what the market will do tomorrow next month or next week right instead you as a, a trader what you are you should be focused on is basically you know uh, i like to look at it as planting the seeds on the ground i never know you know which seeds will 
bloom into a full bloom, you know, huge tree that bears a lot of fruits, right? But I know that, you know, those seeds that doesn't uh, deliver the, uh, the uh, end result that I'm looking for, I just simply cut them away, I cull them away, and I just, I just throw them on side. So it's like trading, right? You're just simply, you know, putting on trades. You don't know which one will turn into a huge winner, will ride a big trend, right? But what you do know is that those that don't play out, you cut your losses, and those that do work out in your favor, you just simply, you know, ride the trend for as long as as you can, right? So I'm not trying to predict anything, but just simply, you know, follow or rather, they'll take what the market offers. Yeah. You you mentioned about the edge, right? That one trader must have. So how does a trader knows whether he has an edge or not? Okay, so I think that's a that's a really good question, and there are there are two ways to go about it. I think the first way and the easiest way to 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 get an edge in the market is don't try and find an edge by yourself, right? I would say it's much easier to look through a academic journal or rather proven traders who already trade with an edge right that has been proven statistically uh, uh, through their you know rigorous testing that there is an edge so for example uh, value investing trend following uh, momentum right these are all pretty much uh, so called I think factors that already exist in the market that there are anomalies out there that a retail trader right can actually profit from it so if you want to find an edge I think that's the easiest way to go about because a lot of the hard work has been done for you right now I would say what is important is rather how you actually take this edge that already exists out there and you know sort of uh, develop it into a way that you can actually execute this particular edge in the markets, right? Maybe you want to focus on stocks, maybe you want to focus on the FX and futures market, and etc. So take what's really proven out there, right? And you know adopt it and tweak it to your own uh, trading style personality. So yeah, that's the easiest way that I recommend most traders you know go with their approach. But the other way, which I think is a, it's a bit more difficult, right? But again people do find success with it is basically relying on your own uh, trading journal that kind of tell you what works for you and what doesn't work. So for example, a lot of uh, day traders, short term traders, they have something called a trading journal that simply, you know, journal down how they enter the trade, how they exit, how they manage their trades and have the record of all of that. Then, you know, after a sample size of 100, 200 trades, they can look back on it and see what are the patterns or the trading setups that make them money, right? And start to focus really on those patterns and then you also realize that what are the setups or patterns that actually cost them money in the long run and try you know, to avoid taking those setups, right? And, you know, constantly, you know, refining and, you know, improving yourself, right? This is another way on how a trader can actually find an edge in the markets and I would say it's more for short-term traders, day traders, this would be the approach to uh, consider. Uh, Alex and Colin, can you share something more private with us? Uh, your trading history, right? What are some of your biggest loss and wins that you have achieved? Alright, so maybe I will just share with you a memorable loss, alright? So, I remember uh, 2014 is the year where I first started trading options. So at the time, you know, uh, crude oil was trading at about $100. And there was a sell-off and it crashed to about, you know, uh, $50 to $30. So uh, I just held on to my view and I'm willing to cut loss. So in options pick, you know, I keep rolling my position and it, I lost to a extent that it wiped out my account 40%. The saving grace was that um, my account at the time wasn't very big. So I just, it doesn't really hurt me. Uh, but in percentage term, 40% is a lot of money. Yeah, so that was my most memorable loss. Oh, my most memorable loss is uh, uh, during the... Euro crisis, I broke almost all my rules. Uh. First, one of the rules I have is don't have a uh, position when I'm on holidays. That was the first rule I broke, okay? The second rule is uh, that I broke is actually to, usually what I do, I will clear off my position and then I will uh, not listen to tips, okay? But there was this fantastic tip that is, uh, very high up person shared with me and say, oh, this is really the trade of a lifetime, you know. So uh, what I did was, uh, first thing first, I uh, believed that person, which I shouldn't, okay. The second thing is, I held on to the position over oh, uh, when I was on holidays. So what happened, well, I, went to, to, I went to Hong Kong for holidays and during that, uh, Disneyland, uh, this uh, Euro crisis happened and this particular stock actually uh, dropped a lot uh, in the morning, so I decided Instead of cutting loss, another rule that I've broken uh, because I felt that it was a long term position based on this idea, right? So I decided not to uh, close the position, and uh, at the end of my Disney trip, I lost about 200,000. <laughs> okay, and the saving grace is after that whole thing, I closed out all my position, I came back to Singapore, I started to trade back and about close to back to about three weeks time close back to about 80% of the losses uh. but uh, there were a lot of lessons there 
you know, don't hold, don't hold position on holidays, uh, don't believe in tips no matter how high up is that. And then the, the, the lastly is uh, if you see it's wrong, just get off no matter what is the, the things that uh, the person say. So it was a good lesson for, for me, even though I know all these things, but I still break all the rules. Yeah. So uh, Rainer and Alex, do you have any advice for new traders? Okay, so for, for new traders who want to get started in uh, trading, I think first and foremost, right, you have to understand that there are many ways to skin the cat in the financial markets. Right? You can be a short-term trader, scalper, swing trader, position trader, or even a long-term trader. And uh, there's really no one-size-fits-all. You really have to ask yourself which of this approach suits best for you. So my suggestion is to go and explore right, on the... Uh, to at least understand how these different type of trading methodologies work, right? And given your own schedule and commitment, you would then be in a better position to know which trading approach would suit you best. So for example, someone with a, a full-time job, it doesn't make sense to be a day trader or a scalper. I would say, you know, longer term trading, position trading, swing trading might be better suited for you. Or perhaps someone who is uh, more emotional, right, prefers to trade with more objectivity, you might want to go with more a quant approach, right, maybe, you know, a systematic trend following, for example. So once you kind of, you know, understand yourself and the methodologies that you think will suit you best, then dive in deep, right, and learn everything you can about it. This could be, you know, reading about trading courses, uh, you know, maybe take up a seminar on it, right, uh, maybe, you know, even reading blogs on traders who have a very similar trading approach that you want to emulate. So that's my suggestion for, for traders who want to get started. Okay. So of course, you know, the first number one way is to read the Trader's Blueprint book. And of course, for new traders, I recommend that you read as much as possible and attend as many courses as possible if you could afford. And also, uh, join some community where you can uh, uh, get like-minded traders and discuss everything. And because you don't know what you don't know, right? So you also don't know um, your preferred strategies. There are many strategies, for example, trend following, you know, pullback method, uh, breakout method. So you need to... Uh, discover your preference. So you need to go through all these uh, live trading, then you know what you really want to trade and your preference now. Yeah. The next question I would like to direct to Mark and Colin uh, regarding this dream of trading full time. I guess a lot of people have this mindset say, hey, I just want to quit my job, I hate my job so much, right? So there's this dream of uh, going full time and quitting the job. So what's your advice on this matter? Okay, so uh, to trade full time, I will highly discourage most people to do so. Number one is because most of them will lack the skill first. They try to, I mean, they, they read, they see a lot of advertisements and they think that, you know, it's very easy, they can do it. You know, I'm a smart guy, you know, I'm working in a posh job, you know, I should be able to do the same in trading. But the unfortunate fact is there's, uh, the, the thing about trading is really very, very different. And uh, for a start, if you want to do it for a living, you really need a certain account size. You need a big account size, generally a very big account size. And it also depends what kind of instruments you trade, whether you trade just stocks, you trade options, or you trade, they're all slightly a bit different. So you do need to know your craft. So the first thing is to know your craft first. And second is I don't really recommend doing very heavy uh, intraday trading and stuff like that because uh, I think as human beings, we are still kind of a, kind of social beings, right? I mean, to I've done it before, you know, proprietary trading and stuff like you sit on the table and then you just not on the table on a chair, sorry, you sit at the table and then you just click, 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 you know, for hours and hours on end, and you know, at a at, at, at the beginning, you feel that hey, it's a glamorous job, you know, you're doing something very high level, but uh, it sort of chips at you, lah, you know, in terms of your health, in terms of your, you know, your mental health also at the same time. So I would be very advising people to do it. Uh, the best thing is to do it on the side, and if it starts doing well, you know, then you can slowly shift your attention to it. Yeah, but in incremental stages, and not like you know, you just quit your job and you just do it. Nah, that's not what I would recommend. You mentioned about, you know, you must have a big account. Is there an indicative number that our audience can take reference? It depends how much you want to make per month, you know. But uh, like I said, uh, the markets are very, very funny to me. Uh, to me, I mean, it's a very funny and very volatile beast. So uh, let's say if, you know, even like Goldman Sachs and those kind of big banks, you know, when they trade, uh, it really requires a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, not requires a lot. I mean, it, it, they don't always trade in and out all the time. 
You know, they don't trade in and out of time. It depends on the volatility of the market. So it's, it's a fallacy that you can every month make an X certain amount of money, which some of the books do say that, but it's, it's not really true. Lah. You know, most of the time, the, the market is actually in portfolio mode in the sense that it really doesn't move that much. Portfolio meaning you put your money there, it's like an index fund, it moves up like 1-2% sometimes in a good month. You know, that kind of movement. And 80% of the time, the market is actually doing that. So it's only when the market starts to get very volatile, let's say Brexit happens or something, this kind of stuff happens where you know, the traders in those big banks will actually go in to do some, a little bit of intraday trading you know, or a few days trades because the volatility is there. So the thing is, uh, you need to know the markets very well and the instrument you trade very well. Uh, I would say that a lot, of a lot of people, they make quite a lot of money using options uh, you know, as an income replacement. I think that would be a good place to start, but you also need to know your stuff. Yeah, because it's leverage, you don't have to put out so much cash. Yeah, but you really need to know the instrument well in order to, to do that. Yeah. Okay. Colin. Okay. Um, my view is um, for most people, if you ask me, Colin, I want to do full time trading. What do you think? I would advise them not to. Also, uh, number one is most people who ask me this question have never traded before, so they are usually not experienced. Yeah. So our first advice I will ask them is maybe to invest or trade a longer time frame. You know, see whether you are profitable in this longer time frame because trading and investing is really a lot about psychology. You need to have the right mindset, you need to have the right strategy to do that. So one of the things you can do is actually to start with a demo account and then start up a real small account and from there slowly scale up to a bigger account. Okay, another area we want to I look at is also because you're actually actually when you're trading you're actually exchanging time for money. Okay, the time spent looking at the charts and looking at the screen with, with money. So one of the things that I look at is really into algo trading example. How do you, instead of trading the market, how do you actually uh, develop something that tricks the market? That means you create a robot, you create something that uh, understands the market, reads the market, and from there, trades the, mar uh, trades the market. Uh, there are two advantages. Number one is uh, the robot has no emotions. You know, there is uh, no emotions in that. You, all you need to do is just to back test, uh, and make sure that your, your system is robust. And number two, uh, the, the, the robot can look at 10 things at one time. You know, while, while a person, if he keeps staring at a screen, he can look at one thing at a time. And sometimes, even if you do that, he get tired also. So uh, that's the advantage of having a robot a system to actually help you to scan the market, look at the market, and uh, replace you in trading. Even though at the end of the day, your, your age, let's say, for example, you keep staring at your screen, your age may be higher, let's say, 10% uh, better than the robot. But over time, because the robot can just keep repeating the same job, it will do a better job than you. So this is some, one of the areas that I look at in terms of systematic trading and things like that. But in general, most of the time, I would advise people, if you want to just stare at the screen and trade whole day, uh, reconsider. <laughs> okay. yeah. In other words, what I'm hearing yeah. is that uh, both of you have said, if you need to ask the question, should I trade full time, probably you're not ready. Something along that line. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Because if, if you are ready, you are going to wait and you will be able to ask. Yeah, because chances are you yeah you don't know the game that well yet. Yeah, so it will be a bit of a hasty decision to just dive in straight like that. Yeah, yeah. and thinking that you can do it with a few thousand dollars. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so. yeah. And one more thing to add is. Uh, Usually when people want to trade full time, they slowly scale up their position. That means they have their psychology to let's say make a hundred dollars or fifty dollars a day, or the risk of fifty dollars a day, then slowly scale up to two hundred, to three hundred, four hundred. So that's how they actually scale up to eventually they eh, they find that eh, I can actually replace my daily income. Then by then uh, you will know that that's the right thing to do. But if let's say you can't even take a, let's say a fifty dollar loss, a hundred dollars loss per day, right? then you're not ready for it. So it's, it's a matter of uh, your reward versus your risk. So at the end of the day, it's, it's like, like what Rainer say, it's really just knowing that and then managing that risk reward uh, kind of thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Ideas are always very rosy, yeah. but execution is a different story. Yeah. All right, so uh, I think the minimum amount to trade full time is at least uh, 200K Sing dollars. That's 200,000 because assuming that uh, the trader is very proficient and he can get a 20% return in a year. So 200k, 20% uh, means it's about 40k. So that can give you an amount, you know, for at least a, a decent full-time income from trading. So I feel that 200k is the minimum. If you cannot get 200k, um, I think it is best that you just trade part-time on the sideline and to grow your wealth slowly. 
So thank you all for your insights. And if let's say our audience want to connect with you, where can they find you guys? Okay, the best place to find me is at my blog, okay, Colin Xiao, C O L I N S E O W dot com. Uh, that's the best best place you can find me. Uh, there's a webinar over there, it's about one and a half hour, one hour, ten minutes webinar. We actually go through the market, what to buy, when to buy, and how much to buy. So you can go to this website and uh, I can meet you at the webinar. Okay, so for me, uh, I'm actually Colin's business partner. So actually you can go to the same website because only after you have gone through your stuff, then you can get my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a, a, a teacher or what sort of, uh, that, that kind of thing. Lah. So uh, yeah, but I'm his business partner. For me, it's, uh, you can go down to my website and blog said uh, tradingwithrainer.com so it is uh, spelled as trading with Rainer is R-A-Y-N-E-R.com and there you can find a, my educational materials so I think the post that I published down there is all uh, all free so help yourself and you know, hopefully it helps your trading one way or another alright so very similar to Mark I'm Alvin's business <laughs> partner and I'm like an underground trader so I do really write stuff at Dr. Wealth, so I'll be mostly right about investing stuff. But if you really want to get in touch with me about trading, you can just email me at alex at drwealth.com. And right now, if you have seen my face and know how I look, right, you can just go to Facebook and find Alex Yo and connect with me. Right? Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.